Well, good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the stupidest Corvette comparison on the internet. My C8 versus my C5Z. I'll be doing a full comparison between the similarities and, and non-similarities, and we'll be comparing their driving dynamics, their styling, how they feel, brake feel, acceleration, all that stuff. So stick around. All right, so real quick, we'll go over the similarities. And then we'll hop in each car, do a little cold start, and go for a drive and talk about it. Well, for starters, they're both, in fact, named Corvette. And both powered by a very similar, yet different, pushrod style V8. The biggest difference, the 6.2 LT2 in the C8 has a direct injection, where the C5Z uses a 5.7 liter LS6 motor that uses port injection. Now, believe it or not, there are a few similarities at face value between the two. For what I noticed, the wiper blade style and how it shoots its uh, wiper fluid is identical. And I think the C5, if I'm not mistaken, revolutionized that technology with the wiper fluid inside the blade. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm accurate on that. Both have a very driver-focused cockpit. Uh, the C5Z is very driver-focused. The C8 takes that up until like an 11. You really feel like the car is just for the driver. Uh, both cars in their current form will get you a lot of looks and compliments. The C8 will make you feel like a rock star, where the C5Z is a lot more subtle. Uh, given its age, but people still do stop and ask about it, which is pretty cool. And regardless of which run you're driving, at almost every stop sign and stop light, some V6 version of a hot rod wants to race you, and they get very cranky when you do not oblige. Both have two seats, and both are actually relatively practical when doing a small trip, ample storage. I would say the C5 has a little more, especially if you have the coupe version, but nonetheless, the uh, C8 has surprised me on just how much cubic foot space it actually has. Both are obviously very performance oriented with, with speed being its chief goal. Both make you feel really confident and proud of what you drive. Uh, I feel like a rock star in either one I drive. I just love it. I feel like a stud. And lastly, both of these fellas were uh, born in Bowling Green, 22 years apart. All right, got that out of the way. So let's go for a little drive in both. We'll do a cold start before each drive respectively and uh, we'll talk about them a little bit. And at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts. about a C5 Corvette, any Cor any C5 Corvette, is that when you get in it, you kind of fall into it. Uh, this car does sit, I feel like anyway, it's a lot lower than the, uh, the C8. The entry and egress on the C8 seems to be a little easier. Uh, I imagine that's relative to the size of the person, but I feel like this car is a little more tricky to get in and out of, and overall you kind of fit you kind of sit just a little lower to the ground, I feel like. And these seats are not adjustable up or down. Yes, they are aftermarkets in stock form. The Z06 does have the uh, adjustable driver seat that does allow up and down movement. These are the uh, Amazon special deals, aftermarkets, and they're static. They go forward and backward, that's about it. Now, I will say after owning the C8 a little over a month now, the car is amazing. Uh, but one thing this car has that car does not is a six-speed manual transmission Which in this car I absolutely adore and it's such a treat to drive. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I couldn't let this car go. I could have easily sold this car I got the most maxed out version of the C8 I could 3LT convertible, but uh, I just I like this car too much. I had no problem getting the uh, Lower trim to save cost and keep both you know what I mean? Now, the transmission. Now, we will say the Tremec in this guy, the six-speed manual, it's a very nice transmission, however, comma, and I, I've never had any interest in owning an automatic Corvette before until the C8 DCT came out. The C7 with torque converter did nothing for me. Very, very slow shifts, but the DCT is, is honestly a very rewarding automatic, if you will, to drive. I, I don't mind it. It's, it's, it's almost as fun as this, almost. The technology in here is, is very uh, archaic, if you will, compared to the C8s. Everything's, the, the biggest way to describe it is this car is analog, that car is digital. There are some upgrades I did. My, if you follow the channel, my stereo, my push button start, my steering wheel, the seats, leather wrap, door cards, you name it. So yeah, this car is not exactly uh, stock. I hate this fucking intersection. One of the biggest areas the C8 excels in is technology. I mean. 
between this car and the C8 is 22 years, but it feels like there might as well be 100 years in Mountain Tech that's uh, been shoehorned in the C8. It, it's pretty crazy, the difference between the C5 and the C8 as far as technology goes. You gotta think this car was engineered in the mid-90s, probably early 90s, honestly. So there's a huge difference in tech, but it's okay. Sometimes I like the analog feel of the C5 Corvette. So I am almost out of gas. So I'm gonna stop, get gas real quick, and then we'll do a couple pulls, giving a sample how this guy feels. All right, gassed up, got my breakfast. I was feeling uh, feeling exotic today. 99% of the time I get the white Ultra, but I went with the, you know, full octane green, full of sugar, all that stuff. I'm gonna do pulls first before I try to open this, otherwise it'll be everywhere. If you own a C5, you know what I mean. Now, I will say how the two cars are right now. Uh, this car is heavily modified. It's got a uh, full exhaust on it, LG headers, the high flow cats, Billy Boat PRT, and how the cars are right now, I definitely prefer this exhaust note compared to my C8. The C8's nice, but it's a little quiet. This is a lot more rowdy, a little more aggressive. It sounds mean when you get on it. Hopefully it comes through on camera. Get a look here for a second. Damn, this car is so fucking mean. Now the C5Z, how I have this car set up with suspension, the uh, poly bushings, the brakes, this honestly does handle better than the C8. I do prefer this car and the turns over the C8. Uh, my C8 is a not 51, so the suspension's a little floaty. Uh, this car, before I did any suspension work with the sock leaves and um, shocks, it was terribly floaty. The car was way too high. Uh, going off an off ramp, it just had really bad rear end kind of. It almost felt like tram lining, but it wasn't. Uh, but no, with the proper coilovers and pushing and uh, brake setup, this car feels great. It definitely feels more track ready than the C8s. But in both stock form, the C8 is a better handling car. Brake feel, again, this car has been upgraded with the Willwood brakes. Um, very simple kit, looks great, feels amazing. I will say the brake feel in this car now is better than my C8. The C8, it's not bad, it's just extremely ho-hum, the braking. It's not bad, it's just nothing exciting. This car feels like it brakes a lot better than the C8s. Uh, it has a much better pedal feel, if that makes sense. Now, the C8 does have adjustable pedal feel, steering feel, all that stuff, where this does not. This is what you get, what you get. And steering. I've done a lot of work to the steering uh, with the Durlin bushing, the solid aluminum steel bushing. Uh, all the tie rods have been replaced. Uh, the front knuckles have been replaced. Uh, again, all the suspension, steering, outside of replacing the rack has been replaced. Uh, it's got the aftermarket carbon wheel, which you know makes it feel a little, a little more exciting. With that being said, this does have hydraulic, obviously, uh, steering. The C8 does not, it's electric, but I will say the C8 steering does feel much better in any of its modes. You got three different modes, you got your touring sports and your track mode. Uh, I normally keep it in track mode, but uh, the steering in the C8 feels a lot more dialed in. There's no slop on center. It's a perfect steering setup. It actually rivals my Mini. I love my Mini Cooper. It is probably the best handling car I've ever owned. And the C8's the first car I've had that actually rivals the steering feel. So good job, GM, on that. We'll do one more little pull here. We'll go home and we'll switch cars. Oh, totally random, but um, my C5 here has, in the last couple months, has developed a whistle under throttle at about 2200 RPM. It's driving me insane. I'm sure it's somewhere in the um, throttle body housing or the, uh, the butterfly valve. I'm not sure. So I gotta get a stethoscope and have someone rev it and I gotta find it. It's driving me insane. If you have an LS6, I know the LS6, the 2001 had the uh, intake manifold whistle issue with just the one year. And I believe mine would, had the recall done. So I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from but I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. This car sounds so damn good. I hope it comes across my video. 
it never really does, but it's like off ramps and stuff. This car definitely has more, uh, I have more confidence around like an off ramp or something in this car than I do the C8. I see it's a little floaty. Like I said, if you, if you want a nice street car, the 9 C51 is perfect. Yeah, so I can easily do this off ramp 20. You can easily do 45, 50 effortlessly in this car. Make no body roll. It's great. Very dialed in. I'm not sure if you can hear the whistle right there. Oh, it drives me insane. There's the cars. All right, I'm going to get back home and I'll swap cars. Let's see if you can hear the burbles and downshift. I love the burbles in this thing. Now my neighbors hate me, so I'm trying to be kind of respectful. Some pops. Oh, and totally random, just coming home, I passed a rapid blue C8 coming the way. I was at a stop. I waved. He just kind of blew me off. Uh, I can't stand when C8 owners will not wave to other generation Corvettes. I don't know if they didn't get the memo or they don't care. Um, but no, in my C8, this car, I will wave to any other Corvette. It's a cool camaraderie kind of thing. And it's kind of corny, but I like to do it. Yeah, whenever I see C8 owners kind of shut on the one, it just kind of pisses me off, you know? It's under my skin, but whatever. <laughs> Setting off in the C8. Like I said, I feel like I sit a little higher in this car. Not a bad thing. Uh, the car is, I think, about two inches taller than the C5. If you're curious, in stock form, that is. So even if you lower this one and lower that one, it's still the same height. All right, first things first. In the C8, I don't know what it is about the new Corvette smell. It is the best smelling new car I have ever smelled. I don't know what molding green pumps into these things to make it smell so good. I know it's cancer causing, whatever it is, but it's it's a really delicious smell, if that makes sense. I love it. And I wish they could bottle the smell, you know what I mean? They, they won't. All right, so the first thing you would notice getting in the C8 coming from a, a C5, or any car really, is the tech. This thing is crazy, crazy tech-wise. The cool thing, right now the exhaust is in quiet mode. Hit my little Z button here, which I programmed for my little goodies. Now the exhaust is open. You can't really hear it on camera, but I assure you, it is louder. One thing that's very interesting, the LS6 has a very notorious tick sound to it, especially with long tube headers. This has almost the same sound, but it's due to the uh, direct injection with the super high PSI injectors firing the cylinders. It's just inherent to what it is. Uh, that's what you can really do about it. I guess you could add some more insulation, but then you don't really hear any uh, exhaust or engine noise. So. Is what it is. We turn the volume from the radio just a little bit and it goes away. This car, like I said, drives extremely nice. The non 51 suspension they have on this thing is extremely soft. Now, relevant to uh, Corvettes, that is. It's when everyone stares at you. It's funny, all intersection. So, yeah, going from a C5 and any trim going to this, just the ride quality. It feels like you're going from a Honda Civic to a freaking like luxury Cadillac. Uh, it's super quiet in here. You can, again, you can hear exhaust tones, but the cabin is very, very quiet, even with the uh, the valves open. Now, one piece of tech that this car does not have, but the C5 does, and that is a heads-up display. Uh, my C5 to C in 2001 actually did not come with the HUD. I put it in myself. It wasn't too bad. I got a video on that if you're curious. This car, obviously, you can't option with a HUD, the 2LT, but I got the 1LT, and that will be one of my projects this summer is putting a HUD in this guy. Like I said before, I've been collecting data on how to do it. If it's plug and play, it's super, super simple. So, more to follow on that. But yeah, the first thing you'll notice in the C8 is just the overwhelming technology you have in here from the screens, all the data you got, everything is driver centric. More so than the C5. Uh, if you're a passenger in this car, your job is just to sit over there. Uh, the driver's control, the driver controls everything from the stereo navigation to the climate. You name it, everything is for the driver. Which, owning the car, I have no problem with. Now, the C5Z is quick. It's a quick car. It's fun, you get on it. Uh, it's got a little more horsepower than stock. If I had to guess, it's got about 430, 440 of the crank. 
this guy right here, 495 to the crank, and this thing feels like it has 300 more horsepower. I don't know how they do it. Actually, I do know how they do it. They got a mid-engine design, and there's no, rarely any uh, wheel spin. Now, when it's in my C5Z a minute ago, I, even though I eased on the throttle coming off the, uh, the off-ramp, I, I got some tire spin. I still lost a little bit. This car, I have never lost a rear end. Uh, the DCT in this car is phenomenal. It's, it's got 630 miles on it now, so I've broken in. The first 100 miles, it was a little jerky. The clutches and the DCT, I'm sure, were getting uh, broken in. But now, you can barely tell when the car shifts, even at low speeds. And if you go full of manual mode, oh, it's so rewarding. It feels really good. It's not quite like rowing a nice set of uh, manual, manual gears, but if this is your only Corvette, there's no issue with it at all. I have no issues with this transmission. It feels really, really good. So good job, GM, on your first attempt at a dual clutch transmission and mid-engine car, for that matter. I guess you could say the Fiero was the first attempt at a, a mid-engine. Corvette. I'll leave it at that. Corvette. Actually, yeah, I don't think I've floored this car since I bought it because I've always been breaking it in and stuff. So, yeah, you'll, you'll see what it's like. I'm not going to do launch control, but you'll get a good idea of what it feels like. Launch control in this thing is freaking ridiculous. That would be a video for another time coming up. All right, well, I just filmed like this whole five minute thing and my phone didn't even record. I think it's getting too hot or something. I don't know, it's kind of aggravating me. So I'll try to do what I just did again. Do a little pull for you guys real quick. Like I stated, C5 is fast, but this car is, is stupid fast. You know, I'm gonna roll in it, you can just womp on it. You don't lose the rear end. Okay. It's... Like this will rival any supercar. It's stupid how fast this car is. It's very invigorating. It almost feels like a roller coaster. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And like I was saying in my C5Z, uh, that car is honestly more rewarding around off ramps and, and uh, like hairpin turns. This car is nice, but it's, it's a little floaty. Again, that has to do with the suspension. That'll be rectified soon with some uh, Paragon springs. That'll lower the car a little bit, make it a little more stiff. Like I said, it's, it's very quiet and uh, composed and saying, get on it, man. And this thing will just go. Uh, just, and the way the power is delivered in the C5, you're, you're pulled, if you will. And this car feels like you're being pushed. I mean, given what it, the motor is, but it, ha it really translates to how, how it feels. It's really, really interesting. All right, so let me get back home and I'll give you my final thoughts and which one I prefer, honestly. Oh, one more thing that's kind of trivial, but uh, if you're gonna be on a long road trip and you're about gas mileage, the C5, honestly, it's much better gas mileage than this guy, and this guy even has the uh, the V4 mode. Uh, maybe it's because I can't keep my foot off if this thing averages about 22, where the C5, if I'm careful and I throttle it, I can easily get 32, 33 on the highway. So the C5, for a reason, maybe it's more slippery, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, much better uh, fuel consumption than the uh, C8. All right, so with that, both cars are very different, but very similar at the same time. You, you definitely know you're in a Corvette, no matter which one you're driving. Uh, both of them have their, their rewards to them. Uh, honestly, the, the C5Z, even though it's three generations older, it feels a lot more performance oriented, if that makes sense. A lot more analog. You gotta be more careful. You can lose the rear end a lot more. Uh, around turns, especially how I have it dialed in. The C5Z is definitely ready for a track, where the C8, the non-251 is definitely not. Uh, you could track it, but I would feel a lot more confident in the C5Z, if that makes sense. Uh, the C8 is a lot more comfortable for a road trip. If you've never had a Corvette before and you don't want to drive a manual, the C8 is probably the way to go. If you want something more track focused, again, like I said, a C5Z might be the answer. But with them being so similar, they're also very different cars. But uh, I definitely see myself keeping the C5Z as long as I can. I love that car. Again, it's, it's paid off. So the C8, like I stated before, I will be trading that in for a E-Ray eventually. That won't be a permanent fixture like the C5Z will. But both cars are awesome. You can't go wrong with either one. And when I come out outside in the morning to go to work, I don't care which car I pick, both are a lot of fun. If I want to be more incognito, I'll, I'll take the C5Z. If I want to get some, some looks, people to talk to me, I want to make new friends, I'll take the C8. I'm very proud of both of these cars. I love them. 
any generation Corvette's very rewarding. Yes, even a C3. If you've never driven a Corvette, nothing about Corvettes, hopefully this little video answered some of your questions. If you have a C8, curious about a C5 or vice versa, maybe this answered some questions for you as well. So feel free to put your comments below, ask questions. I'll get to them best I can. That's all I got for today. I'll catch you guys next week for another fun, exciting Corvette video. Mark out.